today. Andy's Ryzen 7950X beats records with regular cooling, RTX 4000 performance isn't that great, pricing is even worse, and the first Ryzen 7000 review. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD's Ryzen 7950X just broke four world records. Of course, a new generation of CPUs breaking a record isn't that big of a deal. What is interesting is that the records were broken without liquid nitrogen. In fact, the CPU was only using a regular 280mm all-in-one cooler, meaning no LN2, no giant expensive cooler, or even custom water cooling loop. So that's impressive. The benchmarks were done by users Samson and Blue Leader, and as you can see, they broke the record in Cinebench R23, R20, R15, and 7-Zip 16-core rankings. According to AMD, the CPU got up to 5.5 GHz across all 16 cores. And once again, this is with a standard all-in-one cooler, so not even a 360. With that said, leaker Tom Apisak did find a couple CPU-Z benchmarks that show some insane clocks which definitely use Dell N2. Both are of the 7950X, and one actually shows an overclock of an unreal 7.2 GHz. This is almost certainly on one core, but the other shows an all-core overclock of 6.5 GHz. This one includes an image that proves it is across all cores. Basically, AMD's Ryzen 7000 is looking incredible, but not as incredible as this video's sponsor, Brilliant. The one place I recommend to learn the ins and outs of computers, or really anything in the stem field. And that's because Brilliant was built from the ground up for just that. Whether learning about throwing rockets into space or programming Python, Brilliant has some of the most interesting topics out there, and they teach you the right way through making you do it yourself. No more boring lectures or just memorizing formulas you don't actually understand. Brilliant takes you through the process of learning something new by starting you out small and building on it while you interact every step of the way. But don't take my word for it, you can try out Brilliant for free when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt. Plus, the first 200 of you who visit my link will get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermelt. Next up for today, NVIDIA finally shared some real benchmarks for their RTX 4000 GPUs. And while it's not bad, it doesn't look as good as NVIDIA claimed. For starters, we have these benchmarks here. And as you can see, NVIDIA separated games into next generation and today's games. Under today's games, they don't look all that great, with the 4090 having a tough time getting double the performance of the 3090 Ti. The 12GB 4080 even loses to the 3090 Ti in a couple games. But when we get to next-gen games, the difference gets much more pronounced. This tells me that the four times performance NVIDIA discussed isn't just any games with ray tracing and DLSS, but only four times the games that use a lot of ray tracing. You can see something similar in this benchmark, which shows the performance uplift from DLSS 3.0 based on the game. And of course, these are cherry-picked games as well, meaning two times the performance in rasterization is likely a best-case scenario, especially given DLSS 3.0. 3.0 is only for RTX 4000. So were we talking native when he said two times rasterization or with DLSS? I don't know, but they did share some figures at 1440p in esports games, and those are getting some really big numbers. Basically, I think we'll have to wait for reviews before saying anything definitive on performance. Next up, if you thought NVIDIA's RTX 4000 cards were expensive, what do you see what they're actually listed for? As the Spanish retailer CoolMod became one of the first retailers to list the 4090. And as you can see, the cards start at 1960 euros and go all the way up to an unreal 2100. Now, for those who don't know, NVIDIA has begun adding VAT to their 4000 cards, likely because the euro has dipped below the US dollar in value, so the company doesn't want to eat the charge. And that means the MSRP is a whopping 1,949 euros. But these are going well above 2,000, meaning NVIDIA upped the price of their 4,000 cards so high that they're right back to where they were during the GPU shortage. Maybe slightly under it, but not by much. And while these could just be placeholder pricing, the site originally had it slightly below MSRP until they changed it to well over. So it's seeming more accurate and the prices could get even higher. And this goes back to a recent story from 
for Moore's Law is Dead, that claims Nvidia cared more about designing these cards for performance than cost, because they likely assumed the shortage would still be going on, and it's pretty easy to see why. At the time Nvidia was developing these, crypto was through the roof, and the shortage seemed like it would never end, but crypto has since crashed again, and who could have guessed that Ethereum would actually move to proof of stake? Basically, Nvidia took a chance, and they may lose, and unfortunately for them, if this story is right, they can't lower the prices by too much without taking a bath. Then again, if no one buys them, Nvidia won't have a choice. And lastly for today, we have what is essentially the first review of AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPU, specifically the Ryzen 9 7950X. The story comes from the developer of Psy Software, where they take a look at benchmarks done with the CPU and compare it to their last gen parts, as well as Intel's 12th gen. And I'll have affiliate links to these down in the description below for when they're released. It doesn't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Either way, let's get right to it. When it comes to performance, the 7950X completely crushes it. I'm talking a massive increase in legacy integer and floating point operations, and an even bigger jump when you add ABX 512. In SIMD, the 7950X is 60% faster than the 5950X and a whopping 2.1 times faster in this test. Aggregated scores show an unbelievable 73% increase over last gen, and that leads to a 100% increase in price to performance against last gen and 50% over the 12,900K. Overall, they gave it a 10 out of 10, and really the only negative they mentioned was the increase in power draw. Of course, given what we've heard about Intel's 13th gen, Ryzen power draw is nothing. At the end of the day, these are just a few benchmarks that give us an idea of AMD's full-on horsepower. We'll have to wait and see how things go once all the reviews drop. So while that does it for today, what do you think about NVIDIA's RTX 4000 prices? Are you still picking one up? Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure to check out Brilliant in the description below. And as always, have a great day!